I'm Shane. I'm 27, Ooh. and I'm from the Nam. It's not Vietnam. Dag Nam. He's the Nam. Any East Enders in here? Uh, probably all in the booze are in they? But uh, a little bit about me. So I work in events, and I like to DJ in my spare time. In fact, I love to DJ. I DJ all the time. If I'm not at work, I'm probably at home DJing. Uh, so for anyone who's not familiar with the term DJ, it stands for doing jack shit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I do actually like to DJ. I go to the clubs, I like all the music and that. And um, just recently I was actually assaulted outside a club. Yeah, was, ooh, I got beat pretty bad. 140 beats per minute to be exact. <laughs> job as well when I was 17, that was a little bit weird, uh, I was part of the Chlamydia Outreach Team. <laughs> Basically what that means is I used to stand on the high street and I used to ask people if they'd like to take a chlamydia test by pissing in the pot. Um, if they did it, I'd give them a free bag of condoms. Uh, so I was basically a caretaker for people's genitals. I used to call myself a piss taker. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't always easy, it wasn't always easy. We had targets to hit, uh, so did the volunteers, but they fucking hit them, no did they, dirty bastards. But anyway, to help me hit my targets, I uh, actually used to message my friends to see if I could recruit like a few free bladders, see if anyone was available. And uh, if that didn't work, I used to bribe them with cigarettes. So one pot piss, two sterling jewel, pot must still be one. <laughs> Gave a whole new meaning to the term pothead. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, I basically created like an underground piss training ring of nicotine addicts. And it all came out in the end and I got fired. Um, so for a little while I was actually unemployed and I didn't have a pot to piss in. So. <laughs> stuff and I just put my focus on becoming a junkie. Um, but yeah, I don't know, do you think those two things are all that different? Uh, you take skydiving for instance, I've never done skydiving, but to me it sounds like, you know, you take off, you spend the next five or ten minutes thinking, this is it, I'm going to die. Um, and then you land safely on the ground in the middle of the field with a guy strapped to your back. So, now, let me tell you about my first acid trip. <laughs> The only difference there is the guy strapped to my back was on there a lot longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, parents are always trying to teach you good things, you know, like don't take drugs from strangers and things like that, but I actually think that's terrible advice. If I was a parent, if I had a kid, I'd say to my kids, if a stranger offers you something and you think it's drugs, you take it and you bring it straight to them because <laughs> that shit's expensive. <laughs> I don't have any kids, uh, I'm not a parent, but I am in a relationship. I've been in a relationship for nine years. No. <laughs> but no, one common thing I do here is that they, men, they don't know where the clit is. But in my nine years, I've found the clit, but there's another problem. That fucker doesn't stay still. <laughs> the way I see it is, imagine trying to pick up a skittle with a pair of chopsticks. It's like, <laughs> so much for tasting the rainbow, eh? You can keep chasing it, but it will just keep getting further away. So I gave up chasing it in the end there, I just stare at it. Nice. Uh, my friend said to me once actually, he's like, have you ever tried flicking it? I was like, not quite. Like, just try it. I lost that fucker for over a week. Um, yeah, I lost that for over a week. <laughs> So after nine years, you know, it keeps me excited. You know, it's like when you put peanut butter in one of those dog toys and they're like... Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and the cons, uh, I'm still bad from using chopsticks in the bedroom, but... Uh, I've been ashamed, thank you very much. Woo!